Hey guys, this is Mike coming at you today from Player One Video Games. We are located in Friendswood, Texas, Texas <laughs> at 101 West Parkwood Avenue. And our phone number is 281-992-GAME-4263. Today, what are we going to be talking about? We are going to be talking about the 3D. Oh! Yes. And did I have one at launch? What did I think about it? Um, was it amazing? Did it suck? You know, when, when you read out there on the old interweb, uh, <laughs> you hear everything from... Mainly I read that it kind of... Nobody liked it, that it sucks. Things like that. But let's dig in, start digging in uh, with the system. When was the first time I saw it? Um, I kind of have barely mentioned this in other videos. My favorite video game store of all time, uh, I said this last video or two, was uh, during the Neo Geo video, uh, was Gametronics off of Chimney Rock Road. Mm -hmm. uh, they were only here in the early 90s for about three years. And so I was in there one fine day. <laughs> it was probably uh, early 93. It was about maybe about a year, close to a year or so before this system was coming out. And so I went up to the counter and I might have been buying uh, uh, the Super Famicom version of Street Fighter because they were an import, Japanese import video game store. And so I walked up to the counter and thinking I was buying the latest and greatest. I had a Neo Geo I was playing. Right. I mean, I was loving life, right? Uh, the only thing that was bringing me down, Bruce, was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> was the Sega CD. The only thing in my life that was bad. Go watch that video about the Sega yeah. CD. So, I stood there at the counter, and I was buying the most cutting-edge game ever on top of the world, and the owner, or whoever, I think he was the owner, he was an older guy, and he says, hey, do you want to see the future of gaming? And I went, yes. I thought he maybe had a time portal <laughs> or something. And he says, look up into the corner. He had a little TV up in the corner uh, mounted on the wall, and he had a loop on a VHS tape of the 3DO playing this game, Road Rash. Um, and when I saw this game up there, I I mean, I immediately freaked out, right? Are those real people? It, it was the first time I saw like something this dynamic, uh, something this, th 3D, what I was wanting, you know, what I was kind of when the Sega CD came out, what I was really expecting, you know, the mm -hmm. Sega CD to be. Um, and, you know, at that time, this came out, a, man, like a, year, a good year and a half before the PlayStation, maybe a year, at least a good year before the Saturn. So, and it was... It was PS1 quality, 100%, um, that you could have way before, even before Japan had had it, you know, had no. uh, the Saturn and had the had the PlayStation. So when I saw that in the corner of of a uh, GameTronics of this game being played, I instantly thought about it every day. I said, <laughs> "My God, I've got to get the system." I've got to get it. This is what I want. I want 3D gaming. I want stuff to look real like that. I want to, you know, I, I want it to feel just like I thought that was. You know, and there's times when you see a system that, or you see games being played, like when you first saw the Jaguar, you know, eh, or, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. But when I saw this being played on, on that VHS loop, I knew I went, I got to have this. It was love at first sight. Love at first sight. And so, I was waiting with bated breath for months and months. Well, finally, later that year, uh, probably maybe six, eight months at least goes by. It was at the end of 93 when this came out. But boom, it punched you right in the face with a $700 price tag, mm -hmm. right? And I thought, oh my God, I can't do it. it you know, I cannot spend seven hundred dollars on this oh busted did i get busted oh i got bob just sitting there yeah, right right so i said ah oh, i don't know i can't do it i was by then i was out of tech school what, what, i was working that? at marathon i was making decent money you know single no kids all that good stuff so i had some pocket change so i looked there was hardly no launch titles for this thing 
it came with a pack in of crash and burn right mm -hmm. this game right here let's go ahead and load up crash and burn while i'm talking um the you just open so, it up yeah so while while um load this crash and burn this was a launch game it was a pack in and basically it was the only game that was kind of out for the system you know what they try to do at first a little bit with the sega cd the interactive dragon slayer type uh. of crappy full motion video they had some of those but they were the more interactive style they did have like i think mad dog mccree things like oh, that. okay you know uh a little bit later but so i bought this and i remember opening it up and saying okay i got crash and burn here they didn't have i think they had like just the interactive stuff but they had also this kodak cd which you could put pictures on uh things like that so they tried to kind of market this as a multimedia machine right so it's the xbox one before the xbox one yeah they try to do that um so it it was this game to me when i put it in i was underwhelmed a little bit yeah it had good you know decent enough graphics but the gameplay wasn't that fun you know uh, f for this game but let's pop it in here and it wasn't a bad game or anything um but it was not road rash you know it was not what i was wanting to play that quality of game let me crank this up a little and you know this low oh this is a fc10 and and we'll talk about uh the the different models and stuff here in just a minute but we're going to load these up you know this this is cd so it does take a little bit longer to load than the cartridges so here we go um so you know the 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 gameplay was okay um i wasn't totally impressed with it um but i you know i i knew what the potential it mm -hmm. had once again it didn't blow me away at launch though and so what did i do with it it just sat there for a while i would play this every now and then uh one cool thing about the panasonic it if i remember right included it had the first time i ever saw demo discs mm -hmm. of games that had you know le uh, certain levels of games like i remember playing uh later a game called po'd it was you had a jetpack and you could roam around. It was the first time I ever had a, a game that you could go 3D with a jetpack, and I played that demo over and over again. So Panasonic was kind of on top of that. So they had these demo discs that were great. I loved the demo discs on this. Um, but you know, in our late '93, I I still was playing my Genesis, uh, my Super Nintendo, my Neo Geo, and I wasn't even playing my 3DO at hardly. At, at launch so it took about four or five months before games started to come in right mm -hmm. um so i was really quickly done with it with the crash and burn and I, man i can't remember there's maybe one other title like a shockwave style game that was okay it wasn't great but the first game that showed you at that time the power because i think this one i'm pretty sure came out before john madden i and I didn't even like soccer, didn't want nothing to do with it, hated soccer, but this game it was just blew me away. Let's In the magazines, did you even know that a Madden was coming out for the 3DO? Yes, uh, maybe a, it was up in the air though, okay? That's that's the, the thing about the three, it was hard to get information on the 3DO. Um, but we you knew that Trip Hawkins, the owner of EA, is behind this machine right mm -hmm. um so you knew ea games were coming out you just didn't know when so so if you want to look at um, mike's love affair with john madden make sure you go check out the genesis video yeah so you know i love john madden 93 that's one of my favorite games of all the time i loved it and then when 94 came out on the genesis i was just disappointed i hated it right so but we'll, let's get back to fifa here real quick um so i pop this game in it might have came out a month or two before john madden football and i went oh my god that's three that's 
3D and its color, you know, the, the grass was so green, I remember, and the control of the players, it was pretty quick. Uh, the gameplay was fun um, for a soccer game at that time. And um, I was just blown away by the, by the FIFA soccer. And so at that moment, when FIFA soccer came out, I knew I was onto something. I'd go, okay, th this 3DO is for real. It's not messing around. Oh, Italy! All right, my home country. So I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't messing around. I knew that it was what I thought that Road Rash VHS demo was going to be. Um, so but the the gameplay is quick um it the, the camera was great it moved very fluid um and i'm not i haven't played this thing in forever but just the feel of this game was amazing at that time and i played this thing every day back there for until john madden came out and um when madden came out this one came out probably in the summer of 94. So it had been six or eight months until what I was waiting on. You know, I was truly waiting on Road Rash, but then I knew this one was coming out. I was like, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait till Madden comes out. So I popped in Madden and I was totally floored i had never seen you know the john madden you could hear his voice his mm -hmm. crackly voice on the genesis or maybe a grainy little picture and this was the first time i saw uh you know nfl helmets it's going to come up like this nfl helmets and teams and john madden sitting there really talking to you you know um and it just it floor it that that floored me Come on, man, you can do it. But I, this game I played over and over and over, and it is to this day the most unique Madden football game you will ever see. Because even after this, even on the PlayStation 1, they were sprite-based graphics. Uh, this is more like a digitized graphics, right? Um, Come on, that single speed DB. Like this right here, when these helmets come up, it just blew me away when I saw that. I went, whoa. You know, you couldn't, it, that on a, on a tube TV is a lot, it looks a lot cleaner actually. Um, and then John Mann will come up right here. Whoa. When I saw that, I went, oh my goodness gracious, that was amazing, you know. So, um, Let's get into the game. Well, the game is finally here. All right, Madden. That's right. Field. That's the old Super Bowl. And so, um, I this game came out. The FIFA, I was floored, loved it. John Madden came out, loved it. It it was a little not as smooth as FIFA, maybe. It, it had a little bit less frame rates of animation. But once they get into the game, I mean, the colors just pop on this one, you know. Um, and to see full motion video like that, and that was it was a lot clearer than on the Sega CD because this was a DVD, it was not as compressed, mm -hmm. you know, as on a CD. Um, and I mean, the colors like their pants have that weird, you know, color blue in them for the Cowboys, um, which was amazing to see in their silver helmets, stuff like that. Just to see this kind of back and forth was was crazy at the time um, and I still play John Madden to this day uh, the, the, the football but you can you see that the frame rates is a little yeah. they needed a few more like a half a dozen more frames in there to make it just perfect um, but does that look good though but for back if you compare I'll put a PlayStation 1 Madden 95 up there or 96 they missed a year I remember and, and, and show you in the corner here this one does not compare this one destroys the PS1 Madden for a couple of years at least. Um, so I was playing this for a couple of months. Just I, I was I was just loving gaming. 
And even though I had to spend $700 on this thing and sit on it for a couple of months before game started coming out, I was happy. Also, uh, which I don't have here, is Need for Speed, Road and Track Need for Speed. Played that thing to death when it came out. So one good thing, it didn't have a didn't have a lot of games come out, but the game, you could play them for a long time back then. Um, so Madden came out, but then let's put Road Rash back in there. We're just going to keep we're going to keep old Road Rash in there for, for now. But when Road Rash came out. Finally, it was like, it was probably that summer, I heard Soundgarden. You heard really good music, CD quality music. Wait, wait, wait a minute, these were on DVDs, were they? No, these, no, are these were on CDs. These were on CDs, what am I thinking? These aren't DVDs. Yeah, CDs, so but for whatever reason, they weren't as compressed, sorry about that, as on the Sega CD. Uh, I don't know, the things, the full motion video did look a little bit better on this one. So, did... Why did this thing not gain traction? One, the, the price tag was insane. I didn't know mm -hmm. anybody who bought one except for me uh, at that time. And I think people were confused because this system is called what? A 3DO? Right, 3DO. Show me the 3DO on the box. Keep looking. This tiny, tiny, tiny little word 3DO right here. This tiny, tiny, tiny little 3DO right here, what you mainly saw was Panasonic. And real. And real, yeah. So What's why did, real? <laughs> why did they do that? Well, Trip Hawkins was trying to make money off the hardware, which, you know, he should have known. He's smart enough to know you ain't going to do that. You're going to make money off the software, not the hardware. You're going to have to just break even at best. Uh, so he had Panasonic manufacture it. He had an, another company, Gold Star, which mm -hmm. is now LG. Uh, it was a horrible, that Gold Star broke within a year. The belt drive would come off. Th these sometimes, the, the belt would come off. Uh, and then in Japan, they had a Sanyo version. Uh, but this one right here, the 3DO, this one, uh, FC10 model with a top loader. This is the one, basically the best one to own if you're really gonna play it a lot. But when you had three, three different manufacturers manufacturing this, you didn't know, what's this Gold Star? What's this Panasonic? Right, you almost feel like they're different. They're different systems. They should have focused. Hey, this is a 3DO, not a Panasonic 3DO or a Gold Star 3DO. Um, it's a 3DO. Um, would it have beat out Sega? Would it have beat out Sony? I don't think so. But I think it would have stayed in the game as a third party because you know they were going to come out with a 3DO2, mm -hmm. an M2 or something like that later. So I think they would have made it, but it. It would, it's, the, the software was the same as PS1 software. You know? mm -hmm. So EA abandoned them when the, when basically when the PlayStation 1 came out. And that was the death knell for this system. But for me, I felt like I had a PlayStation 1 and a Sega Saturn a year, year and a half before everybody else did. And so I knew it to me, it was a great system. And I kept it all the way until, I think I got rid of it whenever my whenever road and need for speed and road rash came out on the ps1 i said well these are the two games i'm playing uh mad i, I stopped playing madden by then and i think i can't remember i was playing another football game uh on the ps1 that was probably a little bit better more fun gameplay than that one so it was basically a library situation that yeah, made you leave it yeah it was done you know and by the end of this life i was searching for games to play that was good like quarantine uh you had to force yourself to find something good in that game or flying nightmares was okay the one game though that uh, i can't believe that it didn't sell the system was when street fighter 2 came out Tur i think it's turbo yeah street fighter came out on super this street one. fighter 2 turbo turbo yeah uh when this one came out on it it was almost arcade perfect Mm -hmm. So I was like, whoa, so I bought it and it kept me playing for a while longer and I had to buy a six button controller. Um, so one other thing about the controller, the controller wasn't the best. To me, it was just good enough to make me go, I don't hate it. But the horrible thing was, you see, it only has one port. 
So if you wanted to control, put hook in a second controller, you had to plug it into the first controller. Oh, well, that's just annoying. And so you could just pull the other controller guy you know, out of the <laughs> hand, and it, it, that was idiotic. I mean, a, a, a little kid knows to put two ports in the system, mm -hmm. you know, not to put it right there. Why they did that? I did they ever know. make a multi, like a multi-tap kind of like like Turbo Graphics did? I, I, they probably have something. I've never seen one. I know they had a joystick for Flying Nightmares, uh, a couple of peripherals like that, but. You know, to me, when this when the PlayStation One came out, I was still having hope for this. But as soon as it came out, and I played Warhawk and I played Sony's first party games, mm -hmm. I was like, no, they're dead. And Sony just took off like a rocket instantly. And you know, that was that was it for Panasonic. Oh, see, for Panasonic. See, mm -mm. Trip Hawkins, you bad boy. See, so it's supposed to be. 3D oh. So, you know, and there was many other titles like Slam and Jam. I love this game. looked amazing. It was great. Return Fire was just great gameplay. They had a second one that I didn't even know came out till I opened up the store. Jeez. Uh, that I play now. Uh, but the lack lackluster launch was was a problem. The six ninety nine price tag was a problem. Uh, so it started off bad and it never truly recovered from it. Uh, but for me, it it's, holds a real special place. It's a top five system for me. At, I would have to say the only time I've been more excited to play the Neo, the three DO is when is when I had the Dreamcast launch, mm -hmm. and probably uh oh, I just ruined the Dreamcast video. Nope, nope, no, you haven't. The Dreamcast and probably the Neo Geo, those were better launches for sure than this. But this was once the game started coming out six, you know, five, six months later, uh, I, I just ha loved it. I was so happy uh, at that time, you know. And for me back then, when I was happy in gaming, I was happy in life, you know. Happy <laughs> wife, happy life. No, for me back then, it was happy gaming, happy <laughs> life, you know. I was all about it. That was my brain. My brain focused on release dates. Like, oh, this game's come out in two months. God, I can't wait two months. I wish I could fast forward my life two months and <laughs> when that you know, launch date comes out. But I wish I had some of that time back now. I'm getting old, oh, my back. <laughs> so, but uh, what about you? Uh, do you have any thoughts on this one? You haven't been saying too much. Yeah, it's, well, here's the thing about the, the 3DO. Um, I was around during this time also. Actually, I was around during the Genesis time and the Nintendo time. But anyway... I didn't hear much about the 3DO. Yeah. It, it was it was kind of like one of those outlier systems. Like it, it wasn't Sega, it wasn't Nintendo. Like a Jaguar. Yeah, even but even then it was like it wasn't even Atari. It's like there here's some yeah. new company coming along. Well, we thought it was new. We didn't. A lot of people didn't know it was done by you know Trip Hawkins, and so we're like, oh well, here's this new company. Uh, that's expensive, and and that was basically it. That's as far as it went. At least with SNK, with the Neo Geo, we were in the arcades. We we knew what SNK was. We knew what it was. Yeah, that's we true. knew what Sega was. We knew what Nintendo was. That's this was just some random company coming in and making a system that was expensive. They didn't have enough marketing, enough pub for it. No, they none. Had, even in the articles on the, in the magazines, they were kind of a little bit, you know, they were smaller, things like that. And to me, it was way, you know, if they would have really focused on it, uh, in, in, the, in the article writers or whatever, the journalists, video game journalists, was really, really tried it and they would have known, like the owner of Gametronics. He so, knew, I knew. So um, here's, here's my question to you, Mike. Had you have not went in that day and saw that Road Rash VHS on a loop, would you have picked up the Panasonic 3DO? I still would have, but I don't think I would have got it at launch. I probably would have waited because there was nothing at launch, hardly. I probably would have waited in, until like six, eight months later, until like foot, Madden Football came out or FIFA. When those came out, I probably would have got it. And I remember it dropping pretty quickly to three ninety nine, mm -hmm. like the next year, within six months or so. It was six. It was three ninety nine. So I would have saved myself three hundred bucks for sure. If I would have never saw that Road Rash video, you got me. <laughs> yeah. That they owe me 300 bucks game tronic stuff for showing me that video but no you know i bought it in, actually real quick and then we'll have to wrap this one up 
Bayburg Mall always only had generally just one game store in there. Uh, back in the 80s, 90s, it was back, it was electronic boutique. Mm -hmm. But there was a sweet time. They had three in de they had three game stores. Uh, it was EB and two independents trying to come up. Right, I can mm -hmm. you know to the life of me, I cannot for the life of me, I cannot remember the names of those two. One of them was only around for about a year and a half, two years. The other one only run out around for a couple of years, but and it was 92 through 94. So you had three electronic video game stores. You had e, uh, uh, KB Toys that sold a ton of games. Mm -hmm. You had Sears upstairs, which had a good video game section, um, and even Macy's on the third floor had a few games. So the favorite mall, man, it had it had so much video game stuff going on at the time. But I bought this at, at one of the independents that. Uh, that went away uh, in in Baybrook Mall at that time. I forgot to mention that. So, but yeah, I think that I think that's it. I think we'll wrap up the video. So to me, to me, this was a successful system for me, but not for the world. No. Yeah. You, so that, that that's that's a little disappointing. But really, if you're playing this, you're playing a PS1 right. game. So. So, Mike, do we have 3D oh, O games at Player One? We sure do. All these and more. All of these, all all six games, yeah, and, and more, more, and more. <laughs> no, we really do have a good stock of 3DO, which is insane considering the the lack of library that it has anyway. And we have the FC10 in stock. We do. We have the good model in stock, which is the one to own. Hey, I never got it from this seat. You sure didn't. Did okay. Do you want to go show us your? Uh... Or your other 3DO stuff? No. No? Okay, never mind then. All right, guys. Hey, come on down to Player One and check all this stuff out. It'll be a great time.